Welcome to yep. the Caveman Condition, the podcast. Uh, today we're going to be talking to a friend of mine, a good friend, Paul McIntyre, who's a Tai Chi Chuan teacher and a Qigong te- teacher, does remedial massage and a few other things he's going to basically tell us about. So, uh, look, Paul, just give us a bit of a lowdown on your background, mate. Um, relevant background, I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, uh, you, really. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so in terms of, of, uh, of Tai Chi, essentially, which is my primary practice, um, and, and martial arts, traditional martial arts, I started doing, like we all did in the 80s, Taekwondo or Karate, I think was the, was the get-go, yeah. mullets and head kicks. That's right. Um, so I did Taekwondo when I was a little man. And then, uh, I mean, you were, you were around for the, uh, for the uh, kind of the tai Chi beginning stage. of it, really, Joel. Yeah, and, uh, I was. Yeah. I Mr. Guess Sam I am. You were. Um, Mr. Sam I am, indeed, respect. That's right. And uh, I think uh, I was probably about 18. And yeah. um, you guys, wow. actually you and Emil, you guys started getting into it. And um, I heard heard the conversation, heard about what Tai Chi was supposed to be, and it kind of immediately grabbed my attention. And I started trading out uh, trashed Friday nights for early Saturday morning training in the park in Belmain. Yeah. Like in Leichhardt. Yeah, I remember 5 a.m. No, 5:36 a.m. starts. That's right. Yeah, that was a bit it was, brutal. It was wasn't hard it? work when you uh, it was a little brutal, but you quickly yeah. changed your mind about staying out all night. So that was <laughs> probably a good life choice for me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, so yeah, and then uh, moved to Melbourne when I was a couple of years later, and um, started training pretty intensely, training yeah, uh, yeah. systems of of kung fu and. Uh, and a different system of, of uh, Tai Chi. And really it kind of became a bit of a mainstay in my, in my life for since that point it was like ongoing practice in traditional martial arts. I spent time in Japan and um, trained traditional stuff over there. And then- Cause you did- you Really- did um, So you did um, uh, Judo in Japan, didn't you? Or Jiu Jitsu, I should say. I did Daitoryu Aiki Jiu Jitsu, yeah. Just like a precursor to Aikido. Yeah. Okay. All right. And um, yeah. So that was that was cool. That was fun. I'd been doing a little bit of um, sport fighting stuff before that, but I I got to Japan and I decided on that I was in Japan and I wanted to do some traditional stuff and and go that route and um, found some pretty good practitioners over there and then uh, came back to Melbourne and um, essentially long story short because I think there's we'll probably chat about it a little bit later but found my uh, my teacher and my teacher's school here in Melbourne and basically didn't look back. I had been uh, kind of doing a bit of boxing and Brazilian jiu-jitsu mm. and MMA and, um, yeah. And, yeah. Med- and I basically decided <laughs> that I'd keep my meditation and my, uh, and my martial arts separate. Nice. And um, just do boxing and whatnot. And, nice. uh, yeah. Lo and behold, I came across this system of, of Tai Chi, which has been a bit of a life changer for me. So. Yeah, so just out of curiosity, did you do any of the other forms of Tai Chi? Because I know originally when we started, because it's, you know, Tai Chi Chuan, it's a particular form. I know when I was younger, I got exposed to uh, other forms, which were kind of, I, I remember a bloke saying like, hold the ball, turn your feet. And I think I was turned off Tai Chi within about 30 seconds. I was about eight at the time and was like... <laughs> I don't understand what holding the ball's got to do with this. This is <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is not karate kid. Hold my balls, what? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so the Chuan in Tai Chi mm. is a reference to fist or a, as a fighting art. So oh, okay. Tai Chi itself, that. let's just just to clarify as well that it's Tai Chi and not Tai Chi. So the Chi in yeah. Tai Chi is not the same as the Chi in Qigong. So okay. Taiji is uh, essentially Taiji is a reference to Yin Yang principle. Okay, so yep. the principle of duality, if you like. Now Tai Chi Chuan is Tai Chi Fist is therefore a reference to a martial art. Oh, so okay. within Tai Chi Chuan, yeah. Now within Tai Chi Chuan, there are many different schools, if you like, as yeah. anything, uh, and of course there's politics and whatnot about which one is the real Tai Chi Chuan and all this kind of business, which I care very little for. Mm. Um, but over the, you know, over the years I did 
uh, I did train a few of the different kind of major schools of Tai Chi. Yeah. Um, until arriving at this school, which is essentially a young style school or young family school of Tai Chi. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, just to cut in there, like so I got, not... I got a little bit lost through all of mm. that because mm. like I, have, me, I literally had no idea what you were talking about there. Just, so if you could. <laughs> <laughs> If you could so just, it's like, my brain is over there. Man. <laughs> if, if, if you could just touch a little bit, touch on a little bit, like yeah. what is Tai Chi and like how it expands into everything you just started speaking about. Sure. Keep it simple. Okay. <laughs> so it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep it simple. So Tai Chi Chuan is its origins are as a martial art. Okay, it's often practiced in modern day quite. Uh, separated from any martial content. The modern Tai Chi, the most, the focus is on health. So the thing that most people uh, relate to Tai Chi Chuan is slow, fluid movements, like transition from posture to posture, old people in the park, breathing exercises, this kind of thing. Now this is part of Tai Chi Chuan, uh, but it is not, certainly not the whole picture. Right? Uh, okay. If I start going into how it relates back to the principle of Tai Chi, then we might go down the rabbit hole <laughs> a little bit. Uh, so I don't know if you want me to expand on that yet. I'm all for it. Like, if you want to go for it, go for it. I'm interested in this. Sure, sure. So Tai Chi itself is, we've already established, this is not Tai Chi Chuan. What I would say is that Tai Chi is often translated as the absolute or supreme ultimate, right? Now, of course, if you do Tai Chi Chuan and you're talking about that as a boxing art or something like, yes, we do the supreme ultimate boxing art. But in reality, for me, I would say that Tai Chi Chuan is a vehicle that reaches towards Tai Chi. So Tai Chi being the absolute, this is a vehicle towards understanding the absolute, embodying the absolute. So it's, it becomes quite big, right? But it gives us uh, a vehicle that we can use, in our, like our, use our physical body and a vehicle to understand, if you like, yin-yang principle, which is the principle of duality. Like everything that is manifest can be divided into, let's keep it really simple, night and day, male, female, right? Very simplistically. Now, Tai Chi Chuan, when you start to really look at it, Above and beyond being a martial art, it is a cultivation art. Okay? It is an art of transformation from the non-dual, from the dualistic to the non-dual. So you take the principles in, of Tai Chi Chuan, such as, you know, if you look at the flow of the form, it's always moving from open to close, open to close. This is a transition between yin and yang, if you like. Now, as you get deeper into the internal aspects of Tai Chi Chuan, then you start to refine the differential between yin and yang. Now, this has become something that's not conceptual and not mystical. It's something very actual when you do the practice. And then by following that logic, as you can see, I'm not enlightened, but if I keep following the logic <laughs> of what I've seen, the, the progress of than me. <laughs> my own experience, thank, thank, yeah, thanks, mate. <laughs> My own experience of watching the mind and the body change, if I follow that logic, it leads towards something more absolute. So it sounds very grandiose, but really, as I said, Tai Chi, tai Chi Chuan is a path of cultivation, the path towards absolute. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. But then again, it's just people noodling around in the park. That's right, doing this. You know? No, I'm only <laughs> doing that. Exactly. <laughs> Look, I, I always, I remember when I was doing it, I always had that kind of, um, uh, I think I had this kind of, I came up with this kind of self idea of it, I guess, which was just, um, I found when I, when I was doing my forms and certain uh, carters and things like that, that it was this thing of always just trying to find a balance between being extremely present. So actually just being now, not trying to think about the future or the past, which is kind of interesting because if you, talk to most people that's kind of you're always either in this kind of a state of thinking not now but either what's about to happen or maybe regrets or something like this and it was yeah. about this kind of thing of trying to find 
uh, a kind of real stillness about being really balanced about, okay, I'm now, and this is what I'm the, the kind of, I guess the stress and the struggle that I'm physically dealing with through my practice. And that's going to bring me kind of this sense of kind of meditative harmony. I know it's a bit woo woo, but there you go. Mm. That's how I felt. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the reality is if you, if it was just a martial art, you'd be better off doing something else. Like why, like, why would you do something that was so complex and internal and challenging in that way? If you, if your only outcome, if your main, the main thing that you wanted to get out of practicing a martial art was how to punch and kick and hurt someone, then Tai Chi is a long way round. And ideally, by the time that you arrived at a point where you could apply in that way, you've had enough character refinement that you don't care about <laughs> punching and kicking and hurting people. So then it becomes a little bit karate kid, but absolutely, like it is a process of, it's an internal practice which has more than one meaning. It means on one level of physicality, it means the inside moves more than the outside to generate force. So there's a very pragmatic phys physicality to it. But it also means that it's a process of turning the light around and looking inside. It's in, it's internal. Now, when we start to, and we'll probably chat about it later, but, you know, the idea of like what she is, right? You can, when you start to, if your mind is always going out, then you could say that there's a dispersing. The mind is out, dispersed. The chi is dispersed. But when you turn the, the mind around, turn the light inside and look inside, you know what it's like. In your own experience, you become more calm, you more, become more present now. Yeah, reflective. So it's... So, um, is that gone? No, no. I was, I was just going to say, so at the moment you're teaching, as far as the, the styles you're teaching, you're mainly just focusing on just touch each one? Uh, so I, I teach a system, I teach under the Heaven, Man, Earth system, mm -hmm. okay? Heaven, Man, Earth Internal Arts International. So this is my teacher, Sifu Adam Meisner, is, is, it's his school, he established it. Um, now the main, the main practice is Tai Chi, mm -hmm. um, but also there's mental development practices around uh, meditation and a whole, whole range of, of practices, but the main one being Tai Chi. And the okay. system of Tai Chi that I teach is under Heaven, Man, Earth, and it, mm -hmm. is, under, it is within the Yang family tradition. Okay, yeah. okay. All right, well, that explains that. <laughs> so just as, as far that as I go... Yeah, I hope that works. Um, but tell me, just out as, uh, as, far as, I, as far as that goes, in this form, do you teach the martial arts applications within the Tai Chi Chi Chuan, or is it more just the, for the health side of things and kind of cultivation and of strength and energy and all the rest of that. Sure. So as I said, Tai Chi first and foremost is a cultivation art, yep. an art of transformation, but, uh, and as I've grown older, I care less about fighting in general. I'm definitely not fixated oh. or preoccupied with fighting. Obviously. Not that I ever have been. <laughs> but. <laughs> However, sometimes to understand how it's applied martially, Tai Chi Chuan, mm. uh, really there's an intrinsic link between the robust health benefits of Tai Chi Chuan and understanding martial content. So if, I'm, if my practice can have martial integrity and I understand how to apply it, that process in itself is what builds the health. So, yes, sometimes I will bring martial application into it. I don't, mm -hmm. you know, I'm limited on how much I teach. So really that's kind of down the track a little bit. So sometimes it's a matter if we don't get to that. Yeah. Uh, however, I do refer to it often. Um, we do a practice of what's called push hands. Okay, which yep. is probably uh, fairly commonly known. So now this is like partner exercises in Tai Chi. Now, modern push hands has become a sport unto itself. Oh, right? really? And so it gets, it, it, it is, and it gets bound to the rules of that sport and becomes very much about winning. Now, 
that's that's okay and i have nothing against it and some people love it and that's beautiful if that's what you you know if that's your paradigm then great however i'm more of the mind that uh so chen man ching who was a famous tai chi teacher to bring young style tai chi to the west to new york he said that basically push hands is for sensitivity training okay and the martial con- the martial content is in the form so now I'm more of this way of thinking is that if we always, when we do push hands, if it just becomes about winning, then we use what we've got mm-hmm. and we can't use what we don't have. We can't really develop so much. It's a great testing ground sometimes to just go for it. Yeah. But if you really want to make gain, it's much more fruitful to work with someone who has the same aim as you. They want to improve and they want you to improve. And then you work on the sensitivity and understanding. It's a major part of uh, the practice is to, to develop what we call in Tai Chi the quality of tin, which is like listening to a far off sound, if you like, but listening with all your senses. Okay. So this is a very important, important part of the practice. I'm going to avoid the word mindfulness. But- you know, like <laughs> well, don't worry. I think, I mean, in, this, in, this, uh, in the show notes and stuff, we'll have links so people can see what push hands is because um, if you yep. don't see it, it's a, I know from personal experience, it's a wee bit hard to explain. Um, but yeah, no, no I, I understand that as far as the, the sensitivity, because it is, it's almost like a balance game when we used to play. Um, uh, yes. Yeah. Just how little uh, you actually have to be pushed to be kind of thrown off balance. So yeah. So, uh, okay. So does that make any sense, Mr. Lovemore? It does. It's just, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> I like absorbing all of this that you're saying. Like I don't, I've never heard anything about it. I don't know anything about it, but it's, it's, it's really interesting to like hear so much about how big and how much broader Tai Chi actually is. I only ever knew it to be what Joel showed me, which was like those Joel. movements. I never knew anything else about it. And it's n- never something that's actually interest me until now until you've actually spoken about it um and what i what i've picked up so far is that you've obviously been doing this for a very long time right so you've been you said you started doing it when you were 18 or younger and you've obviously seen some like definite benefits from performing this type of um martial arts I'll, i'll call it or performing tai chi so what are some of the benefits from doing tai chi sure so the process, it's a very, the way that the system that we teach, I would say is a principle based art. Okay. So one of the things I think that differentiates it from a lot of Tai Chi that I've seen is that um, we definitely don't collect forms. It's not allowed about a lot of information. It's about understanding principles and embodying those principles directly through practice. So some of the key principles are, as I said, the idea of ting or that like deep listening, awareness. And another concept that we hear a lot in Tai Chi is the idea of what we call song or to feng song. Now this is particular language and it doesn't translate fantastically without a direct experience as with many of these things. However, you could say that it's a deep, profound degree of release. Release in body, release in mind. So ting and song. And then when we look at the body, for example, we work with, of course, structure and song, structure and release. Now, if you think about the process that you have to go through to build a body that is open, release and structured, in order to be able to cult- cultivate that in body, you cannot but transpose this over the mind. In fact, mind is king. Mind leads the way. If, the, if you're stressed out, caught up, distracted, all of these things, then you've got no hope of being able to command the body to do what you want it to do, let alone find subtle tension and learn how to release it and to let it go let alone starting to move in the complexities of the form, which are deep. Like in the West people, of course, they, they, we go backwards. They want to put the form first and make it the most important thing. But the form is 
astonishingly, astonishingly complex. There's, there's a lot going in there. If you take the time to build the fundamental practices that are like the fuel for the engine, and then when you go to move, you have real juice, then it's, it's something else altogether. Now, so what I would say is the benefits are a structured and released mind and a structured and released body. Okay. So you say it's almost like think it's almost like having a, a complete harmony between your mind and your body. Okay, now good. A complete harmony between the mind and the body would be Tai Chi Tai Chi accomplished. Okay. okay. Job done. Now Tai Chi Chuan is the effort to harmonize those things. It is the gong, the skill of it is the exercise to try and achieve the skill of harmonizing internal and external mind and body. Okay. That's it. So good, good question. Great question. Mr. Lovemore. Is that really your name, Mr. Lovemore? Yeah, the, my surname is Lovemore. Yeah, it's the real. Damn. I didn't it make goes it with his wrong. voice too, right? Is that why, is this why you found this guy, John? <laughs> <laughs> he found me, mate. I'll tell you, what can I say? <laughs> yeah, nice. oh, well. He was crawling out of a pub after well. drinking his <laughs> He said he couldn't, he wanted an extra one. Well, there we go. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> so as far as it goes, you've talked yeah. about the, um, the, lineage, uh, the, the lineage a little bit, as far as it goes from the, mm. the Yang, Yang family um, and how long you've been teaching. So just out of curiosity, how did you actually stumble across your teacher? Out of all of this kind of running around the world and then suddenly landing in Melbourne and then, yeah. you know. Yeah, I know, funny, hey? Yeah, it's a classic story. When you're ready, that teacher yeah. finds you, or whatever it is. Lady in the tram. Um, <laughs> 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 Sorry, I had the meatball, and the alley. Oh yeah, God, was terrible. yeah, yeah. Oh, cool, <laughs> Wherever you want to take it. Dude. <laughs> um, so it, it kind of was like that, though. Like, I look. I trained in Sydney, as you know, and then. Mm. I, spent a bit of time up north and came down, down to Melbourne and I trained for many years under um, an amazing teacher um, and a very, very close friend of mine, very good friend of mine still, um, Tao Jian Yun in, the, in Tai Chi and, and the Nature, Tai Chi Bagua Xin Yi. I did uh, a system of um, internal Kung Fu with him as well. Um, and then that kind of led into uh, Muay Thai and trips to Thailand and all this kind of stuff, oh, wow. which to be honest, started to veer away from kind of what I really wanted. And then time in Japan, I looked, in fact, I looked in Melbourne everywhere for what, for real Tai Chi, you know, like I really was on a quest. Yeah. Um, and this is like, this is in the days of like VHS and books, man. Like, you know, there was, there was no Google <laughs> like you. I remember getting, going to phone boxes and calling, you know, the Chinese master in Box Hill. Oh, wow. So, yeah. All, all of this and, uh, and trips overseas and time in Japan and training with, um, you know, uh, with teachers who had something of, of, of the internal, but nothing that really hit the spot. And then I came back to Melbourne and I, it was one of those things where I literally, I gave up. I reached the point where I gave up. I was like, okay, I don't think that this Tai Chi Chuan that I read about in the classics is, I don't know where it exists. Mm. It's a nice idea, but I don't know where it exists. I'm going to do MMA and boxing and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and I'll do that to keep fit and well and martial arts and I'll meditate for my spiritual practice. And then literally the week that I gave up and just went, forget it, I'm not looking anymore, uh, my old teacher, Tao, said, man, you've got to go check this guy out. And Andy Mack, my first teacher in this system, who is a first-generation disciple of my teacher, Adam Meisner, uh, had put up these huge posters all around Melbourne, huge posters that said <laughs> four heavy hits in one second, real Tai Chi. And I was like, whoa, this guy's a bit cocky. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I definitely have to go and see what this is. And I, and I walked into his school with, I don't know how I had the chip, but I had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it didn't take, like I walked into the school and I just went, whoa. Okay, these guys are not joking. And uh, immediately there was just a, a vibe of like serious practice. And uh, it had been a while since I'd been in a traditional kind of Kung Fu school scenario. I'd been training in noisy boxing gyms and whatnot. Mm. And I was immediately kind of sobered. And then 
as soon as I, Andy touched, you know, as soon as I felt his skill, I just went, okay, I'm way out of my league. I have nothing but things to learn. And uh, then it just kept going, you know, when I thought Andy was enough, but then having, you know, when I met um, my teacher now, Sifu Adam, my mind just blew and I straight away didn't look back many trips to Thailand, live in practice with him and 10, 12, 12 years now or something um, without looking back. Yeah. So wow. That's a hell of a ride. Done deal. Yeah. 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 It's yeah, good solid. One. So just out of curiosity, why is he based out of Thailand? Uh, he's not anymore. Okay. Uh, he was for many years. Um, uh, he spent a lot, lot of time there as a, as a young, from quite young, um, oh, training okay. uh, in, in temple, like training meditation in temples and um, training. Well, he trained martial arts here as well, but yeah, he was, he was back and forth from around the age of 16, I believe. So he okay. always had a, a close link to, to Thailand. Um, and that's usually where I catch up with him. His wife yep. is from, from Thailand, but he's okay. now uh, mostly in Europe in, in Greece, actually, at the moment. Oh, hard life. <laughs> yeah, he, he's beach. earned it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck so, in a small European apartment, I think. Oh. <laughs> Quarantine, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's actually not such a pleasant thing, I have to say. <laughs> so, uh, How are the you handling this? Hang on a sec. I've got, I've got a knock on my door. Sorry, you Go might have to press pause. That's all right. This light is killing me. Nah. Turn it off, mate. Uh, oh, it's sorry, just a little bit sweaty. Right, right. <clears throat> That's the third time I've had that. Someone's parked their car in the wrong spot. <laughs> oh, bastards God. bastards um all right so yeah so just looking at your your website which i uh, will obviously put down below um you also teach qigong so do you want to just mm. give us a bit of an overview of qigong and how it relates to your practice with with tai chi if it has benefits so on and so forth you know the usual sure deal yep so Qigong is secondary for me, for sure. Yep. And the Qigong that I teach is simple. Mm. Yeah, it is. And I, do, and I would say it's fundamental training. In a, in a basic sense, there are practices to uh, where we harmonize, again, internal and external. We harmonize movement, breath, and awareness. Okay to nourish chi, and we can talk about what that actually means. Mm -hmm. Now, I define them as fundamental and simple because as differentiated from more like complex and specific, like nadan internal alchemy practices. I do not teach this, this is above my pay grade. Now, <laughs> it's true, when, what, we, what we teach and what we practice aren't Right. Yeah. So it's like yeah. I should be what when your practice, your personal practice should be pushing the envelope. You yeah. know, you should never for, never forget your foundations, but you should always be pushing the envelope if you want to keep transforming and keep progressing. Now that is not the level that you teach at. You teach no. at where you've come from, otherwise you're negligent. So the Qigong practices that I teach are very simple. Yeah. Okay. Very fundamental. Yeah. Now I know um, are they come yeah, go on. No, go on. No, no, go on. I was just going to say, I, basically, these the methods that I teach come from within the Heaven Man Earth system, or from earlier practices within the Zeran Men Gong Fu and Qigong practices that I've learned before. Yeah. Okay. Now, I was just going to say because I know from I know just little bits, but is it more? Uh, this probably won't make anything uh, sense to you, Luke, but we'll explain. So, is it more from a, a kind of a Buddhist background or from a Taoist background as far as the Qigong goes? As far as the practice, do you know? Well, there's, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's, there's Buddhist Qigongs and there's Taoist Qigongs. Now, the stuff that I teach, I suppose you would say is more of a Taoist background. Yeah. But, uh, you know, those guys were, uh, you know, there's so much interchange of information mm. back in the day. So, uh, 
is to say Probably what's one half, and, one and, and look, foot, Buddhism has had a big influence on on all of my practice. Um, so you know, it's going to creep in there. It's going to creep in there. Yeah. Nice. But uh, yeah, I mean, these methodologies are more Taoist. Okay. More from Taoist right. tradition. Yeah. yeah. So all what right. is chi? Um, what is chi? Um, I'm really interested. It's the, it's the question. I have it's in it. No idea what it is. Oh, I've got a golden bullet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is chi? Huh? It's one of those yeah. things. Okay. Let me start broadly. Right. You can say that chi is. It's often trans. If it's very simply translated, people refer to it as life force and stuff like this. Chi is. Everywhere, it is in and through everything, right? So by its very nature, it defies and evades definition. However, if we think that it's in and through everything, if it's in everything, then it's is manifest accordingly. So what I mean by that is, for example, in Taoist traditions, such as Taoist medicine, they start to talk about particular kinds of qi. For example, heavenly qi or pre and postnatal qi, like what is given and what is acquired. You know, like you can gain qi from food, for example. They also talk about definitions of qi, like the qi that is related to the function and quality of different organs, such as your kidney chi, your liver chi, your spleen chi. Now, if we, if we keep going down that route, we start to pretty quickly move out of any degree of expertise that I, that I might have, right? So if I talk about chi, then I would talk about it more in context of tai chi and qi gong, or these developments, these methods to develop chi skill. Now, Qi in this context, you could say, and uh, Luke, you pointed to it before, is, this is my preferred definition from people who I consider authorities, that is the matrix between mind and body. It is the matrix between mind and body. Now, of course, that sounds very mystical and doesn't make that much sense without direct practice and experience. But the more that you actually do the practice, the more you, you see this to be true and not something mystical or whimsical like if you look at your own experience we all know what it's like to have excessive chi which becomes dispersed so we use language like my thoughts were racing my heart was on fire like that is your chi burning that is the chi going out and becoming dispersed dispersion and excess leads to a depletion. And we all know what a depletion of chi feels like. It feels like, you know, when it's taken to extreme, I can't get out of bed. Like, you know, I, I'm lethargic, dull, all of these things, we know these experiences for ourselves. So we definitely know what not chi is, if you like, okay? Now, any, any definition that we can give it, you know, you could, you could break down and say, well, that doesn't make sense according to this, whatever, okay? It's just pointing to something. Now, if you think about the development, if gong, like qi gong, if we're doing methods to develop the skill of qi, then we work with, within the mind-body matrix to strengthen the body or strengthen qi, strengthen this entity through qi, right? So how do you do that? Is that you turn your awareness, awareness, mind, inside the body, and you bring them into harmony, thereby strengthening the matrix between them. That's on one level. Mm. On another level, if you were to say that chi existed somewhere in the physicality of the body, and we won't go too far down the rabbit hole, but it exists in what the classics in Tai Chi call silk. Now, what is silk? Or in Chinese, in Taoist philosophy, they call it huan, I think. I don't know much about this. Huan, which is the space, the silk in the body, or what you probably know as fascia right oh, okay. or sinew okay now <clears throat> this is where 
Tai Chi, for example, we would say we utilize Chi to strengthen. We don't utilize Li or external force. So there's nothing wrong with external force and doing any of these things, right? But that is strengthening the body through muscular contraction. And, you know, building your muscles. Whereas in internal martial arts or in Qigong, what we're trying to do is create more space in the fashion, in the silk in the body, right? So you can actually, through these exercises, when you give up on the big muscles, you start to be able to create space between bones and skin, for example. Now, literally what you're doing is increasing the capacity of the fascia, of the silk. So that is where, if you could say that chi existed somewhere physically in this paradigm when we're talking about chi in this context, say that that is where it can be nourished and developed. This is how we open the body. Wow. Whoa. That, wow. is, that is a lot to like <laughs> absorb and take in. Like, yeah. I'm definitely going to go and do a, a, a boatload of research on this afterwards <laughs> just to get, to get a bit more a bit more in depth. But I'm assuming that it it has a very personal like feeling to it, right? It, it comes with experience of doing Tai Chi, for example. Right. I mean. Not personal in the sense of like it's it's mine or my version of it. No, 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 no. That's not what I mean. It's like, but, like yeah. I don't. I'm trying to understand or like get yeah. get a grasp of the of the concept of it, but I'm yeah. struggling to. You know that sure. when I mean personal is like I need to experience a, a certain thing to yeah. know what it actually is or what it feels like. For sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's unfortunately it's kind of like you just end up reeling off kind of cliched sayings <laughs> about it's it's all just yin and yang man <laughs> it's all just yin and yang right because without direct experience it's it is it's it's kind of empty okay. but like i said if you can kind of if you can reflect on your own experiences of you know what it's like to feel have a scattered mind or to be content you could say that in a sense this is developing, you know, this is either the chi dispersed or the chi contained. And when we do Tai Chi, when we do Qigong, we're developing, what you could say is that you're developing good chi skill in terms of be smart with your chi. Like if we're talking about it simply, you know, you nourish the chi. So you do the basic things like you eat good food, you get good sleep, all of these things, you nourish the chi. And then you can accumulate chi. You accumulate chi by through the exercises that we do to open the body and make a vessel that is able to be filled with the good juice. And then you go through a process of we call sinking the chi. This is the experience of filling the body with chi so that then when you move around and do form and application, you have substance. But of course, without experience, it sounds like lots of words. <laughs> But as far as it goes, I mean, how long did it take you to start kind of actually being able to feel the effects of what you were doing? Because obviously, you know, when you first start, I think for most people who start any type of martial art or anything like this, it's generally in this very, um, I guess, enlarged version. You know, it's very blockish kind of because you're trying to yeah. teach a fundamental movement so that it becomes sure. muscle memory. So as far as for somebody who's just starting, how long does it kind of for them, should they realistically expect till they actually start kind of cultivating or at least starting to feel sure. some benefits through their practice? Sure. Well, they say three years to small achievement. Okay. And, uh, and of course, you can go to a class once a week for three years or 30 years and never train in between and be a stressed out maniac in, when you're not at class and you won't <laughs> get much. But, uh, you know, if... You know, we're talking about dedicated practice. Yeah. Now, um, at the same time, like I wouldn't say, to be honest, I felt like when I found this system, the, you know, there was a massive acceleration in that first three years, like immediate, like, wow, I can really feel things happening here. Okay. Uh, but if I hadn't gained benefit from the first time that I ever did Tai Chi with you in the park mm. and with Sam I Am, Joel, like, and I never would have gone back for more in the first place. Yeah. Like the, the, the fruit was enough that I, 
I knew there was something there. I got enough benefit that I wanted to keep going. So it's both immediate and lifelong. Yeah. So generally, as far as your, your daily practice goes, uh, how much are you practicing these days? I've learned better than to uh, make grand statements about how much I practice. <laughs> I do three hours every morning and nothing else. Yep, next day, God, I'm trying to get out of bed. <laughs> uh, it varies, man. Like when I'm on a, uh, if I'm just on a, on a training trip, it's many hours a day, you know? Yeah. Um, in daily life, I mean, I have a two-year-old, so that's been an interesting challenge. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, for me to get through my fundamental training, I need a few hours. Yeah. So but a few hours. Anything a day. is better than nothing. That's right. Yeah. If I can, <laughs> yeah, I, I aim to get it. Yeah, I don't always get that, but yeah, sometimes I get more, sometimes I get less. Just touching on that as well. Do you do like any other form of exercise? or I don't know if I can call it exercise or practice as well, along with, <laughs> along with passing. Cause like, as far as I understand, it, 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 it can be quite physically taxing on the body, performing um, all these yeah. movements. Do you do anything yeah, else I mean, on top of that? Uh, generally considering how much time it takes me to get my fundamental training in before I would even say I'm kind of being explorative, uh, not really. No, um, I have done a lot of other stuff in the past, um, but I'm, yeah, mostly just that. I like swimming, oh, but I'm not good at it, and I hate freestyle. I'm causing like I'm causing traffic jams in the slow lane, dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, if if someone wanted to start doing this, like me for example, I'm quite interested in in giving this a go for for a month or two months or whatever, like a little bit. Three every years, day. mate. Three years. <laughs> Hear me out. How, how many minutes a day would you recommend a beginner, someone who has an absolutely zero experience doing this for, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, um, it depends. I mean, that's a hard answer. That's a hard question to answer. But um, enough time that you can really be present and deep in the mind. So that's going to, yes, it's a bit of a vague answer, but... You know, like I think, you know, it's kind of hard to put a time on it, but an yeah. hour, you know, like you want enough time to not just be like, um, it's so different. Okay, this is why Tai Chi is really, really hard work. I could finish a day of work and go to the gym. And I did this for many years, go to the gym and lift weights or run on the treadmill and watch the TV because only the body's engaged. It's not anywhere near as demanding as like the matrix between mind and body. It's not that. Tai Chi is like, this is my, I have, my soul has to be involved in this shit. Like, it's, it's, it's taxing in that way, you know? So uh, in terms of a beginner, I would just say whatever you can do is great, you know? Okay. But I would say more than five minutes, you know, like enough yeah. time that you can kind of, if I've got one exercise to do, give enough time that I can kind of let go of the rabid kind of monkey mind and just kind of calm myself down, use it at the very least as a medicine to calm yourself down and do, you know, do at least 30 minutes. I'm very keen to try that because like, I, I have a very short attention span, right? So my mind is constantly racing. I'm constantly <laughs> thinking of from one thing to the other all the time, every time. And I'm trying to incorporate <clears throat> um, meditating into my daily routine. So I wake up in the morning, go for a nice long walk, have some green tea with my wife. And we come back and I start my day with doing yoga and some meditation. But I find that when I try and meditate, even if it's for 10 minutes, I can't sit still. I can't actually try to focus on nothing. Oh, physically, physically, you can't sit still? I can't. I, I, I cannot do it. Like, I can't physically, sit still. Physically, you can't sit still or the mind won't sit still? This is the, the thing. I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I, like, I just, I want to I wanna move. My mind can't not concentrate and can't not think about something. So I just think okay. if I'm practicing Tai Chi, with these like flowing movements, it'll maybe help my mind calm down and empty and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's a couple of things with that. The monkey mind is human nature, so don't worry about it. Number two, if you can't tell me whether you're sitting still for 10 minutes. Open your eyes, open <laughs> your eyes and, and see if you're doing this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
For example, and just, I'm sitting down working at, at the computer, like yeah. right now, my foot's tapping. Yeah. Right. Like okay. my, my, my foot, I'm, I'm always sure. moving some part of my body. Nervous yeah. energy. Yeah. So cool, man. I mean, that's great. That means you have a really, what I would say in terms of meditation is that you have a simple task, a very simple task. You're trying to sit for 10 minutes, just sit still. Do not have any care for how much the mind jumps around or anything else. You have one task, keep your body still and watch how insane that drives you. That's it. That's your job. Stay still for 10 minutes. Now, in terms of the other question around would Tai Chi be this, you know, would it help in this process? I believe absolutely yes. My experience is that if you're running all day, busy at work, whatnot, and then you stop, all you see is the movement mm. because everything is still in that process. And then you stop and all you see is this. So I have many times utilized my practice as medicine and in the sense of like, you know, it's like, okay, no, where are things at? I'm too busy in the head to sit down now. I'm going to, do something like my Tai Chi or do yoga. I do a little bit of yoga, by the way, actually. It must be an exercise. A little. Now, if you can kind of slow down with the movements, it's like there's it become, you can kind of just slowly put the brakes on, slowly put the brakes on. Your mind is still occupied. Your body's still moving. It's good mental development. Now, meditation gets, the word meditation gets thrown around so loosely these days it's not even normal my teacher defines meditation as from the first stage of absorption and on everything before meditation is mental development so don't even worry about meditation just develop the mind and you will get the gain the skills to be able to meditate if that is what you want but if all you want to do is be able to slow down a little bit be a little calm you don't even need to worry about absorption you know so know that doing something like tai chi doing yoga making yourself sit still for 10 minutes is excellent mental development wow i'm you definitely going to put those to practice yeah so look, i i actually have a little bit of a question just in regards to beginners who are interested in doing tai chi because i know there are a lot of uh i guess good tai chi practitioners and i'd say there's probably some a few dodgy ones uh maybe um, so just in, in general, if when people are looking at, at, at kind of people who are teaching Tai Chi or things like that, are there things that they should actually be aware of or look for? Or is it just a case of just jump in, do the movement, see how you fare, and if you can stick with it, then uh, you'll start to get a better feel for it? No, I mean, one of the things to look at, I think, as a student, as a potential student, is look at the students of the teacher. Have they achieved something? Are they going in the right direction of where you want to go? Is the teacher, is the teacher doing what you want? You know, is that, is that person embodying what you would like to achieve? Mm. You know, so if they're, if they're like crazy, <laughs> they have, you know, they have cool skill and they can do stuff. That's great. But they're, you know, they're not, sober and collected then it depends what you want if you just want to like there's plenty of like crazy kung fu teachers who have obscene excellent fighting skill yeah but i, I mean what, you want. What, what i mean by that is that like you know you can go to a um uh i guess it's like you know i can watch somebody who does tai chi right mm. and they're just kind of standing there and flopping about to put it nicely yep. Uh, yeah. And they're not actually doing anything. Like I, I know now when I look at somebody who's doing tai chi, I can look at their yeah. body and go, "Oh, okay. Actually, they're doing yeah. some things that I can see." Like I know that yeah. personally. But obviously, for you, for someone who's been doing a lot longer, yeah. um, I'm just curious because it's like when I see somebody, for instance, like, and this is something you taught me when we were at a, at a, a, a mutual friend's wedding. And we're doing some practice and you were like, okay, when you actually sink and turn, like I was going from one movement to another, you were like, don't come up. It's not this kind of arcing movement. Did I say like, that? It was kind of like that. You were like sink and then turn through. And it was just like, keep your weight stable and down and then move through. Have to say, 
I was sweating balls doing this thing. Like it was brutal. We were in Bali and I was, was like, hot. it was in Bali. It was hot, but still I was sweating. I had like a puddle around me and I was like, you were like, just sink deeper and move. I was like, I'm a heavy bastard. This thing sucks. This is so hard. And I was like, oh, <laughs> it's too hard. But uh, I'm just curious because it's like, you know, there How are. How do you look for that substance? Yeah, because. It's, you, yeah. Yeah, it's like some teachers are just like, okay, stand there, do this, move like this. Sure. And it's like, realistically, yeah. if you're new, you see that and then you see somebody else, you might not realize. You might be just like, and then you've sure. kind of committed to this thing. Which, yeah. you know, if it does get you to slow down, great. But it's like you're not, you, you'll you kind of, I guess, invest time and energy into something that um, sure. might be based on kind of an illusion as opposed to, oh, actually, yes. you know, you should yep. be kind of looking at this more intensely. Yeah. I want to help you because I know, like, that's, that's part of the gig. We want to, like, get rid of the waste and get straight to it. Yeah, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. But, um, but, uh, yeah, it, it is hard because the reality is it, it takes time and a little bit of, there is some kind of trial and error. But I guess, you know, I would say uh, it's great if, I mean, someone with some degree of skill should be able to show you something in your own body and in their body. It should yeah. be manifest in the body. It should be manifest in the body. It's not, if it doesn't change the body, then it's not legit. Basically. Yeah, yeah. So they should at least, you know, it doesn't mean they have to be able to like, you know, make a micro movement and send you flying across the, the courtyard or whatever, but they should be able to say, this is what sinking the chi feels like in the body. You know, this is how it feels when you do it in your body. Feel like they should be able to give you some feedback. Now, most Chinese masters aren't going to let you put, their, put your hands on them and, and get that kind of feedback. So, yeah. but it's also important if you're going to a school, the senior students should have some degree of achievement. Even if the teacher is very good and you can see it, if the, if the students that have been with them for a long time haven't achieved anything, then they're not teaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's, you know, there's, there's one of the things that I would say sets my teacher aside is that not only can he do, but I have never met his, he just has a remarkable capacity to speak, like waste no words, speak very clearly and just give the correct instructions. Very, very sharp, very good teacher. And this is a major part of it is that people can actually grasp what this is. And you can, from this conversation today, I clearly don't have the same degree of skill <laughs> that he does, but You're you can see place. this is a it's, a, it's a, it's not necessarily a simple thing to describe or point to or be able to actualize in, in your own experience. Yeah. Well. I have to say it's a, it's definitely a hard one to deal with sometimes, mm. finding that elusive mm. teacher. Um, mm. Yeah, I mean it's kind of funny. I did research here. Yeah, I, I was kind of funny. There is um, there is a Yang school here in Montreal. Yeah, uh, yeah, there is a Yang school. I stuck my head in there for a moment. Uh, yeah. I had look. I swear to God, this is going to sound so um, uh, made up, but it's so not. Uh, I had this moment where. I went and saw their school and I was mm. watching the guy teach and I was like, mm, I'm not feeling this. Like personally, I was just like, I'm not feeling this. This is kind of, everybody's just wearing a uniform and just kind of flopping about. That's how I kind of felt. I was like, okay, maybe I'm missing something. But anyway, that's okay. Um, and then like two days later, um, just randomly, we were looking after a friend's dog. And I took mm. the dog to the dog park because that's what they've got here. They're not allowed to run around all random and stuff. And uh, I was sitting in the dog park and there was a guy literally behind the fence, which I could see through, doing the yang form. And I was looking at this guy and I was like, I know that form. Well, I know parts of it. Uh, and the way he was moving, I was like, okay, this guy actually is really kind of doing something. I could see how he's, he was kind of moving and stuff. I was like, oh. And so I started having a chat to him and he was like, this guy was like, oh, yeah, you know, kind of, it was kind of this Chinese guy, it's very brandy. He was like, oh, you know, my kind of father or uncle or something taught him and, you know, he hadn't done it for a while and had gone back to practice. And that was never saw the guy again. It was just like, had like this 15 minute conversation and then he just disappeared into the ether. But he was just, the way he moved, it was like, um, it was kind of almost like a, a Chuck Norris joke. It's like, he doesn't kind of 
raise up, he pushes the earth away from himself. It's kind of like that kind of thing, just the way he moved. It was just almost like he levitated. I was like, oh, okay. It's kind That's of cool. Sick. And, you know, only the good die young. You only met him for 15 minutes. So exactly. Like, oh, <laughs> Done. He's serious and mystical. Awesome. <laughs> this guy was good. Oh, I love it. Like that. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I got to have five minutes of like, oh, and then it was over. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. oh, it was pretty cool. So uh, apart from that, you're also doing, uh, give us a little bit of shout out about your school. You tell us a bit about what yeah, you're doing I mean, and stuff. Yeah. So uh, I have a, a branch school of heaven, man, earth, tai chi. So, yeah. I mean, honestly, like, it, of, of course, I'm going to say look into look into the school. Uh, my teacher has, uh, Sipu Adam Meisner has more than 20 branch schools around the world. So Australia, around the US and around Europe. Um, he also has a five year online curriculum. I think it's going past five years now as well, which is, which is a remarkable program. Um, from the perspective of a kind of personal long-term student, I'm amazed at what his, the clarity and the practices that he's sharing there are like, no secrets, um, mm -hmm. quite, quite profound. Um, and then personally, so I run a small branch school of that in Melbourne. I'm sitting in my little clinic and studio where I do uh, body work and massage. Um, and yeah, it's Love amazing, it. man. I'm looking into some, yeah. Obviously, you know, as well, Joel, I come from a long history of um, uh, youth work and, and social work. So I'm kind of, um, yeah, looking at ways of, of, of bringing this stuff into that, that kind of space as well. But um, at the moment, I'm just enjoying working for myself and getting around in my socks. And love it. Just love it. Working my own hours. It's good. Beautiful. So uh, how, uh, obviously, we'll have a link, but give a shout out as far as where people can contact you and such. Yep. So you can go to heavenmanearthmelbourne.com if you want to contact me directly. If you're interested in the school more broadly, um, which you should be, uh, check out heavenmanearth.com and there's uh, a link to a bunch of affiliate schools there across the world and you can see a lot of my teachers' uh, material. So Sweet. heaps of stuff on YouTube if you want to see some good Tai Chi and see what it looks like and understand shape. That's yep. what you look for, actually, Joel, in reference to your other question. Look at shape. Oh, and if you look good. at the shape of my teacher, then you'll be able to say, okay, that's good shape. That's a good reference. I like <laughs> it. I like it. Yep. So are you on Twitter or, Twitter or Instagram or any of these vague and... I am, on, things? I am on Instagram and Facebook somewhere. Heaven Man Earth Melbourne, I think, is okay, me on great. Instagram. Beautiful. Um, no, no Twitter. No Twitter? No one uses Twitter anyway. It's fine. Right, okay, cool. Thanks. Come on. You're the one who... He made me use Twitter. I'm now on Twitter, and I've, I, I've never used Twitter before or Instagram. I have to ask other people. I'm old. I'm like, networking is like, for me, you know, you used to get a newspaper and read that. That was networking. <laughs> you know? I remember, man. It's all right. I'm there. <laughs> I don't look old, but I definitely feel it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, look, thanks heaps for that, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, you are our inaugural uh, podcast invitee, which is great to that's, the caveman that's condition. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Like so oh, hey, wait, are you going to give me my quickfire questions? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I was just about oh, to get into it. I okay, thought about no. this. I still don't know the answers to some of them. But, you know, okay, no, that's, that's fine. fine. So, Luke, because I've been <laughs> you know, asking more more questions than uh, anything, you're yeah, going to fire I'll these, fire these away. Okay, right. first, favourite cheat meal and drink? I guess cheating, yeah, what does cheating mean? I guess coffee <laughs> is a cheat drink because, you know, it's like taking a performance-enhancing drug in the morning. We couldn't have had this conversation. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> food would be uh, goat, goat's cheese feta, man. Oof. Ooh, yeah. That. Persian, yeah. Persian style? Yeah. Mm. Uh, Greek, man. Greek. Okay. Greek. okay. Yep. The Greek. So what is, what is your uh, question to, what is your procrastination station? So like yeah. what breaks your stride? Yeah. Can I, can I say my two-year-old son or is that totally... Um, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's procrastination. That's kind oh, of like right. life, Look, mate. <laughs> as... as as we said, uh, you know, well, I have to post on Instagram and Facebook and, you know, I am not impervious to the occasional scroll when I should be working. 
but I reckon I've probably got it more under wraps than, than the comic. So, <laughs> not too bad. No. Nice. And my Netflix subscription is occasionally put on hold because, you know, I've diseased myself with some serial watching. Oh, <laughs> oh God, stop. <laughs> Binge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. the drug Third of choice. Question. Best way to relax. Uh, best way to relax is an onsen, which is a, you know like a onsen, like Japanese onsen, outdoor natural spring. Ooh, oh no, that like the hot baths. Though. Yeah, man. Ooh, uh, oh, I did one natural spring in the snow. Damn, yeah, that's the how I'm gonna chill. Dude, I just went to when I was in Budapest. If you ever go. There's a, a place called the Rudos Baths. They were built around the 1300s, indoor, but they've got like uh, six pools going from 48 degrees down to 24, steam, spa, the whole bit. All in kind of like sandstone, yeah. Oh, digging it. it hard, Love digging it. it hard. Fan. Fan. Mm. It's alive. Okay, least favourite form of exercise? Running and riding uphill. Oh, yeah. It's not pretty, you don't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was <laughs> Your favorite form of exercise? Uh, aside from obviously Tai Chi, um, yeah. swimming. Like I said before, swimming slowly. That's true. So slowing people I down do, in I slow love, lane. I do love swimming. <laughs> okay, so what's the best piece of advice you've been given regarding maintaining your health? The best piece of advice is that there is a difference between fitness and health. True. That's fair. It's very true. Yeah. And then last question, favorite podcast. Hey. Guys. Hey. hey. <laughs> yes, I was waiting for that. Okay, That's right. Yeah, I've not paid for that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> Love it. Oh, All right. Well, look, that concludes this lovely uh, interlude, as I would say. Uh, it's been absolutely brilliant to catch up with you. I'm glad all is um, doing well in the, uh, in the COVID land. Um, I was really disappointed there was no zombies, uh, obviously. Uh, would no zombies yet. Uh, yeah, not yet. Not, no. no zombies yet. If, you can always it, be look, optimistic. If Trump has anything <laughs> to do with it, they, they might turn up from drinking whatever disinfectant they did. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> he's, he's a, you know, I don't know if what you're getting in Australia, but I tell you, every time I, here in Canada, every time I, I look at the news, um, it is, it, yeah, I giggle and chuckle to myself in the most kind of ludicrous manner because that man is, is two degrees of something else. I got to tell you, it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I try to stay in my bubble, man. Oh, do it. Do it. Do it. I'm trying. I'm trying. Uh, All right. Nice. Well, look, we'll kick it off. Uh, well, we'll say goodbye there. Have Thanks, a great guys. one. And um, Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much. Awesome meeting you. All the best. Nice to meet you, Luke. Ciao, Take ciao. Care. See you guys.